for me we want to try to classify the shots long shot short shot so where you're stood down the left hand side would be seen as a long shot setup and then you can see on the right now you've moved into that short shot setup where feet are narrower you're nearer the goal everything's just small in its entirety rather than being full with the stance full into the grip I want full swing. So what you do on the first one, you sort of moved your foot a little bit too far, yeah. just put the ball a bit too far back, then you sort of went back to sort of where you wanted to go and readjust yourself, and then you did go to the correct position there. So the ball now, as we said, is kind of just left of your sternum, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's the sort of centre part of your body, and you are left of that of the golf ball. So you're going to be hitting the golf ball now with a nice downward strike, hitting the ball cleanly first, not the ground behind the golf ball, okay? And if we actually then look at these angles, so there's seven iron on the left hand side, so that comes back now, and we swing back, so not much arms, just more arms and a little bit of wrist, that's absolutely fine length back there, as we come back to the golf ball now, because the ball now tracking up that line, roughly about 17 degrees there, off the club face, you can see the, this blue line is roughly parallel to your toe line where you were kind of aiming, so we got about 17 degrees there off that club face with a seven iron, okay? Now with the pitching wedge, obviously you've got more angle, same back swing, a smidgen longer because the shot won't go so far with the pitching wedge because yeah. obviously it's got more angle. We've got the same sort of distance as you come back to the golf ball. Good strike as we can see. Sternum now still maintaining over the golf ball. Maybe a smidgen move back but as the golf ball now flies at that blue line there we can see. Maybe a bit under that we've gone 30, maybe a bit more than that, 30, 30 degrees. So you're getting about 15 degrees-ish more angle with the pitching wedge to a 7 iron. Okay, so your 9 iron will be somewhere in the middle of that. And as we said, in terms of the numbers, this is basically a roughing. So a 7 iron would be roughly 25% in the air, 75% yep. of roll. Okay, your 9 iron would be roughly sort of 50 50 in terms of in the air and then roll. And then your pitching wedge or your sand dime, which you can use for chipping would be roughly 75% in the air and then 25% roll, okay? So if needs be, you just can... Just for higher, yep. like just to go up a bit... Yeah, exactly. So the situ you won't, in the situation where you'll need to go 75% in the air and then stop quickly would be over a bunker if the flag was quite close. The problem is with this shot, we're using a wedge or a sand down especially, the risk involved with it, okay, if you don't need to put that risk into it, there's no point. The gain is going to be one shot. So say you play with a nine or a wedge and it lands over the bunker and has too much roll because obviously it's going a bit low, you roll 25 foot past the flag. Yeah. You then two putt back, it costs you maybe one shot. If you pull off the sand down and you get close, you might single putt. But if you can't guarantee the single no, putt, no. you're risking really going in the bunker or whizzing it across the green. So there's no real benefit. The only situation I wish I'd say to a lot of people you should only be trying sort of the lob shot with the pitching wedge sand on the sort of 75%, 25% in the last four or five holes of a round. Yeah. You shouldn't be trying on the first green. No. So in a match play, why give a hole to someone on the first hole? If you can just chip on the green and two putt, you're still in the hole. In a medal round especially, don't ruin your score yeah. on the first hole. Mm. It's only towards the last sort of three or four holes where a little bit more risk may be needed. If you're playing in a match, say you're three down with three to play, you've got to go for it. It's like do or yeah, die. Yeah. Then you might pull it off. Or if you're in a medal round and you want to try and get a really low score to try and win a competition or whatever, then you would go for it then. But if you don't need to go for the risk, if the risk of getting a one-shot gain, but yeah, you might I lose three that, or yeah. four, so look at the balance. You're risking four shots potentially to gain one. I was so if you have to go yesterday. for it, then go mm. for it. But again, as great as it is when you play that lob shot with a sand on over a bunker and it saves you one shot, yes, it's going to be a great feeling of boost, but the negative offset, if you get yeah, it wrong, it just ruins it and then you're in the that. bunker and then four or five shots later you're still in the bunker. So always look at the situation. The least loft of a club, seven iron, even a five iron, a six iron, you can do the same shot with, even a hybrid, believe it or not. You can do a little chip with a hybrid, it won't go very high, it'll be probably sort of 10% in the air with a hybrid yeah. and 90% yeah. roll. There's nothing in the way. Just trundle on the ground, it will run up towards the flag. The lower the ball is on the ground, the quicker the ball is on the ground, the easier the shot, okay? But look at it in terms of setup-wise. Try and simplify things. So we've got long shot setup on the left there, on the left there, and we've got short shot setup on the right. Those are the two main things. By bringing your foot closer, you can see now the ball, in effect, has moved back of your stance, isn't it, really? But it's the same distance, really, from your left foot. So you haven't really you haven't sort of shuffled your feet sideways, you just brought your foot in closer, which has moved your centre now 
Maybe it's a bit lesser. Okay. I can't believe I've been doing that all, all but, the time. Yeah. Talk. Oh, no. And the thing is, if you put your hands forward with a pitching wedge, you're now dealing. If you, if you had the club, for example, with the ball back here, you've now taken that much loft off the goal. That's about 10, 15 degrees. Mm. Well, now you're, if you're using a sort of seven or an eight iron, you've now got maybe a four or five iron, which might be a little bit too low. But if you're playing it with a club to get a specific amount of height and roll, and in reality you're giving it a lot less than that, then it's going to be tough to judge, isn't it? If you're playing for maybe a high shot, it's going to come out really low because your hands are way forward. So you're using a club incorrectly. So if you want it a low shot, choose a low lofted club, seven iron, five iron, six iron or whatever. If you want to play a higher shot, your nine, your wedge, or your sand dunk, if you feel you need to, okay? Yeah. But that's a decision you're going to make when you're on the golf course with the shot in front of you. So rather than worrying about all the different techniques and the different shots, am I chipping, am I pitching? If you go to the golf and go, right, short or long, pretty obviously you can look at the golf ball, high or low, fairly self-explanatory, then you just choose the club and then you worry about how far the swing needs to be rather than make your arm swing. I do, yeah. And again, with less power needed, it's just your arm swing. No wrist, no real body turn, no. but I would encourage as best we can if we can try and follow the golf ball as we hit it yeah, there. Good. At that point there, I'd expect your eyes to really yeah. look at the golf ball. The more your head stays down, the potential of it in the ground behind the ball will increase. In fact, you know, a lot of them in Swinish and elsewhere, you have a plateau. Yeah, the greens up on that, so the twelfth so is the twelfth greens are a bit higher above the fairway, isn't it, and stuff. And some yeah. other holes where you've got to try and get a bit know, higher there. Um, it's, and then you do use your pitching wedge. Yeah, exactly. But, but again, you could plateau. potentially still use a seven or a five and run at the bank. If the bank is fairly short grass, yeah, yeah. there's nothing stopping you running the ball up a bank. A golf ball would generally roll up a bank quite well. It needs to be a bit harder, obviously. Yeah. But these are shots you can practice. If there's something in the way, the only reason you've got to go over something is the ball's going to stop in that object. I have bunker, water, trees, thick rough. If it's just a fairway with a mound and a bank, yeah. keep it on the ground, run at the bank. Yeah. A ball will roll up a bank. If you look at a shot, I think it's the par 3 13th, is it? There's a slightly raised green there. Yeah, yeah. And the fairway does slope up to the green. Mm. If you hit a driver a bit low and running, it would trundle down the fair and run up on the green, wouldn't it? Yeah, it might go too far, but yeah. it would still run up the bank. So you could potentially play that shot low and running. So again, it's worth practicing a few shots around the golf course. You drop a few balls down and try a few lower running shots. Just see how much the bank takes off the golf ball in terms of the speed. So, so don't always think, oh, I must get the ball up in here. The no. lower the ball is the easier. It's the stance. It's the setup. Oh, yeah, the exactly, thing. exactly. The better you I stand to it, really you wrong. kind of get away with any errors in the swing to a point. If your head stays on a bit too long, you get away with some of your shots. If you're in a sort of ball back here, so my hands fall and you're doing this, it would be awful. Make sense? Yeah. Happy days.